Hello, and welcome to Arcadia University's BI 327 Histology Course Series of Lectures on the Female Reproductive System. In the first lecture, part one, we're going to look at an introduction and overview of the reproductive system. As with all of these lectures, please review the objectives uh, that are provided on the web page because this will provide you with an opportunity to see what are the important concepts uh, associated with this topic. Now, if we take a look at the female reproductive system, what we're going to see is a series of structures which are involved both with the production of hormones as well as specialized structures involved with uh, supporting and nurturing the development of uh, the infant uh, through the embryonic and fetal stages, as well as accessory structures such as the mammary glands for continued uh, support and development of uh, the offspring. And so we'd be looking at uh, the ovary, uh, the oviduct, which is also called the uterine tubes or the fallopian tubes, uh, as well as the uterus and vagina, as well as the uh, accessory structures associated with the mammary glands. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that when we take a look at the female reproductive system, there's a lot that's going to be going on. Um, things are going to be going on within the ovary, which have to be synchronized to changes that are occurring within the uterus. Uh, because the ovary is going to be involved with the production of the egg. Hopefully, uh, if the, the function of the, uh, uh, the ovary is working properly, it's going to produce an egg that can be fertilized uh, to start the next generation, uh, continue uh, reproduction, uh, to establish a fertilized egg, to establish uh, an embryo, which ultimately is going to be housed within the wall of the uterus. And so we want to synchronize the production of the egg and hopefully the fertilization of the egg with the preparation of the uterine wall so that it's ready to receive uh, the embryo and support it for continued development. Uh, so if we take a look at this, what we're going to see is a situation where there's going to be a lot of, over, uh, a lot of uh, hormone, hormones which are uh, involved in the process, which are essentially going to be involved with synchronizing the activities that are occurring within the ovary. And so we're going to be basically looking at a follicular phase uh, where we're going to be looking at an ovarian follicle, which is going to be involved with the production of a mature egg that can be fertilized. A, a relatively short ovulation period where that egg is essentially going to be uh, essentially mature and is going to be released from uh, the ovary. And then we're going to have a luteal phase of the ovary. Uh, and this is going to correspond to a, a temporary endocrine organ, a temporary structure within the ovary formed by the remnants of the ovarian follicle that are going to be involved with continued production of hormones. Uh, going along with that, taking a look at the, the bottom of the slide, uh, we're going to have the changes that are going to be occurring within the uterine wall. Okay, so early in the follicular phase, when the ovarian follicle starts to develop and starts to kind of prepare to produce the egg, uh, we're going to go through menstruation where we're going to lose the uterine wall. And then through the later stages of the follicular phase uh, going into ovulation, we're going to have a proliferative phase of the uterus. And what we're going to be looking at is going to be almost, uh, in essence, a regeneration of the uterine wall. So we can see a thickening of the uterine wall. And then it's essentially going to be uh, established and then primed so that during the luteal phase, while the egg is hopefully being fertilized and being transported down uh, the oviducts uh, to be delivered into uh, the uterus, uh, the uterine lining is going to go into a secretory phase where it essentially uh, becomes prepared to receive uh, that fertilized egg where we do the embryo. All of this is going to be dependent upon a number of hormones that are going to be involved with both controlling the start of this process as well as signaling and synchronizing what's occurring between the ovary and the uterus. So again, to take a look at this uh, with the ovarian cycle, basically what we're going to be looking at is within the ovary itself is we're going to have a follicular phase kind of represented by two and three where we're going to have a maturing follicle, ultimately ending up with a very large, very mature follicle with an egg that's ready to be released. That egg is going to be released at four on the diagram to the right through the process of ovulation. Hopefully that egg is going to be released, picked up by the oviducts, and then transported where it can be fertilized and then ultimately delivered to the uterus. 
Now, if we focus in on what's occurring within the ovary, after that follicle has released the egg, the remnants of that are going to produce the corpus luteum. We'll talk about what that is in the next series of lectures in, in part two when we're talking about the ovary. The corpus luteum is essentially a temporary endocrine organ that's going to be present for a relatively short period of time. And if fertilization and implantation does not occur, the corpus luteum is going to break down and the whole cycle is going to repeat. Um, we'll have menstruation or loss of the wall of the uterine lining, and then we're going to trigger the start of maturation of a new set of follicles. And so this ovarian cycle is going to continue to, to uh, proceed. Similarly, the uterine cycle is going to be running relatively parallel to this uh, and synchronized again because of the hormones that are present and signaling what's going to be going on. And so if, uh, implant, if uh, fertilization and implantation doesn't occur, essentially if uh, the woman doesn't become pregnant, we're going to have menstruation, where we're going to have loss of the uterine wall, uh, we're going to have a breakdown of the wall, and then the proliferative phase is going to correspond to the follicular phase of the uterus when the ovarian follicle is being stimulated to produce a mature egg that can be released. During that proliferative phase within the uterus, we're going to look at a, essentially a regeneration of the uterine wall. And so we can see a thickening of the uterine wall as we replace the, the cells that are present. Uh, at ovulation, we're going to trigger uh, a change in what's going to be going on within the uterine wall. And so it's going to go from that proliferative phase to a secretory phase. Uh, we're going to have the essentially the anatomical structures in place at the end of the proliferative phase. And so the secretory phase is, in essence, becoming primed to receive the uh, fertilized egg. And so, in essence, it's going to be occurring corresponding to the luteal phase uh, within the ovary. Again, if uh, pregnancy doesn't occur, if fertilization and implantation doesn't occur, this whole cycle is going to repeat itself. And so we're going to see a breakdown of the uterine wall and the cycles start over uh, at the beginning. Now that's going to um, kind of complete our relatively quick overview of the female reproductive system. In the next series of lectures, what we're going to be looking at is in more detail about what's occurring within the ovaries in part two and what's occurring within the uterus uh, in part three of these lectures. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu. Thanks and come back for part two of our lecture series on the female reproductive system where we focus in on the anatomy and physiology of the ovary.